Now let's go into the Africa and the Pan-Africanism. The Pan-Africanism is what you and I, we have lost it, Susie. The problem being that we are talking about colonizing and Afroism. Either we live as an African, colonized, but then liberated, having an independent. So having an independent means that your destiny was given to you. Having an independent means that they didn't take the land away. Having an independence means that you wanted to be a sovereignty nation with sovereignty rights, sovereign nation, sovereignty rights. Have your own destiny, decide what you have. Yes, of course, there was so much that we couldn't have achieved because some of the countries or most of us didn't prepare, but there was a need that they have to go because some were by agreement and some were by fight. When they saw their brother struggling, we also wanted to liberate it, so they left. Now here we are, 61, 60 years, 71 years, Egypt and co, they are around 1936, and then Ethiopia and others. Generally, the whole Africa, we will say that we have overall average about 70 years of independence across board when our brothers and sisters from the French, English, the Belgium, the Portuguese, and the Italians, and all of them left the soil of Africa, and then we call it a liberated nation. Total population as we speak to today of Africa is until about 1.3 billion. Out of this, how far have we been able to unite? There was a need that we unite Africa. That is what you and I and all of us are preaching this evening. We united Africa, 1963, when Ghana stepped forward to call for United Africa, called Organization of African Union. Then all of them, they decided to join. That is where the problem started. The problem started because Ghana couldn't have sat in a solution. Nigeria couldn't have sat in a solution. They decided to have their own destiny and push the socio-economic agenda, union, unification, and then also to live as an African to take our own destiny in our own hands. However, the French went to sit back, the English went to sit back, but very much more uh, the French, that the African Union problem, fundamental problem in 1963, is what we are paying for the price today, that they never wanted African, a black man, ever to unite. And I'm saying this on authority because Excuse me, the French, in the 63, 64, 65, all the summit that they had, up to 70, there about in the mid 70, all the French colonized countries on the African belt will not go to Addis Ababa to attend the meeting of the African Union, unless they have to go and originate their, their, their journey from Paris. Felix Sofo Boigny will go to Paris. Togo president will go to Paris. Benin will go to Paris, Niger will go to Paris, all of them would have to go to Paris and take instructions and fly to Ethiopia with their French deputy. So any agreement at that time was not signed. And some of the agreements since 1963 is still hanging in the balance. It has not been signed because the French won't sign. If the French won't sign, some of the English countries would also fold their hands. So we decided to have a union. We decided to unite. We decided to um, uh, what to promote trade, diplomacy, economy, and then also to do a lot of things together. Is that what that has taken place? It never. We have gone a long way to change the face in 2002 when we decided to more broaden it up and have what is called African Union instead of Organization of African Union because some of the countries did not join at that time. We have all that. But for your information and for the information of the listeners, Africa undoubtedly, it is the only richest a continent of the whole worldwide. And if we do a normal, simple mathematical check, normal calculations, every country, including that of mine, we are having not less than 10 solid mineral resources in commercial volumes. And I repeat again, Ten solid mineral resources in commercial volumes. Togo alike, Nigeria alike, Benin alike, Cameroon alike, Niger, across board. And then we have what is called a balanced range of the country because we don't have too much bad, call it natural disaster, weather, etc. Africa, as we speak, 
having all this 70 years that we left that is i'm referring to the the, the our colonial masters they left we have so we still have more than 700 million out of our population of 1.3 billion still not having water to drink we are having more than 500 to 700 also million people 600 million people without energy without electricity so was it good for africa to have taken independence or it was bad look at the youthful population of the world today is found on the continent of africa graduated or educated youth of the continent not more than euro the total population of europe is 749 41 million with different languages or different background etc they colonize themselves nobody colonized them but we were colonized but then we liberated we said that let's unite how far have we united Susie, we have each country, if 57 countries, and each one of them is having as much as more, many as 10 mineral resources, gold, diamond, timber, whatever that you can name them, iron ore, bauxite, oil, and on top of it, God bestowed this land with what is called a fertile land with water bodies, with rivers, with stream, everything that humanly that we need, that is what God gave to Africa. Is that what Europe got? No. Is that what Americans got? No. Is that what the Latinos, the Central American, the Latin America, South America, and the Asians got? No. So average of over 600 or five, 650 to 700 mineral resources across the whole continent and yet that is where we are we are speaking and we are preaching about pan-africanism how best we'll be able to harness the opportunities how best we'll be able what has been the problem you made mention of leadership we will get there but we have to understand the context and the history of the continent before you move that you must know where you are going you should know and understand your history it is not the history that we were colonized that has been the problem but very much after the second world war most of the european countries the balkan states a lot of them were as bad and as poor more than the african continent but today look at how far and where they've gone look at how far they have also managed to develop their country what have we done with the african union what have we done with the ECOWAS? what have we done with the CDAO? What have we done with the Sadak? What have we done with the East Africa? And then even our brothers and sisters from the northern part of Africa, some of them had even distanced themselves, gone to join the Arab, Arab League in the Western Asia of the Mediterranean. So the United Front of Africa, where we decided to talk about unitedness, sharing one passport, having open border, doing trade, doing business is that what has happened up to today we haven't been able to do that so the leadership is a crisis or the leadership is a problem is the independent that we take was it a curse or the independent was a blessing but i'm saying that if we knew that is what how our leaders post independent leaders when the power was given to them and i'm saying it and i'm saying once again we can do a background check and then track record of all when the independent was given to our brothers and sisters our forefathers who really fought with their blood who really fought with their energy they went through very very inhumane anything that you can think of to get independence but when the independence was given how best did we do or did we use the independence making it up to our generation till today we have done the West. For them, one would say that education was not there. Our time, there is an education. But the force of Patrick Lumumba, Julius Nyerere, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, and then all that you can name of, Kenneth Kaunda and Co. Tell me any that exists or any that is out there. We have somehow been neocolonized in our mentality. And then the political leaders at that time, the leadership, 
that took power they hold they held the power on their chest till today they didn't give power so the political class of post independent is what is still ruling africa that is where we have our problem today no outsider is permitted or allowed to come in any outsider is seen as an outsider your contribution is nothing because cleverly when the colonial masters after colonizing us and after they left because they knew there's a resources the people they gave power to they indirectly directly took all their families their children and took them back to their colonial homes you're talking about london you're talking about france you're talking about luanda the, uh, sorry you're talking about portugal lisbon you're talking about brazil you're talking about other countries italy rome where they came to colonize us. they took the political leaders that were given the power that was the hitch so very much the people at that point they felt comfortable their sons and children were going to better schools if you look across board these were the people that turned around their children have come they've grown they come back to leaders so for them pretty much they have lived in elite society elite life they haven't seen anything much so africa pan-africanism it's been neo-colonized again even though the white man is not on the soil of africa but then their legacy live it their legacy is still living in africa take them country by country we instituted and established what is called diplomacy being one of the anchor which africa were to use to diplomat uh, diplomacy to, to 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 connect us has it happened like that how many african countries that does not see eye to eye with their own brother their own other other sister country a lot of them how many agreements that are so lying on the table of the african union or whichever blocks in africa that has not been signed and then their common English is that things are in the pipeline. That is why African pipe is always choked, every country. Because a lot of things that the politicians have injected in the pipeline, it will not make water flow. We have a problem. So the problem, as you brought this platform for Africans to discuss, and I must say that whatever I say on this platform, it is my individual independent opinion it does not represent the opinion of the whole world the whole africans but then we are sharing ideas we are discussing africa we are talking about pan-africanism what is the meaning of it where is the spirit of africa where do we go from there how long are we going to be slaves indirectly and then sitting down blaming the west that they have done this they've done that please they gave you education they gave education to the southeastern asian countries they gave education to the Arabian world, the peninsula. They, they gave education to the, to, the, the, to the Latin America, the Central and the South. How did it happen that countries like Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, and then you talk, talk about, uh, how do we call it, Singapore, most of all these countries were equally or also colonized, but at the same time, we are far older than some of them. Ghana is older, six months older than Malaysia. Ghana, Nigeria combined and helped Malaysia on authority how to build, how to uh, plant palms. Today, they are the biggest player. Look at Kuala Lumpur, the city, and watch Lagos, and watch Accra, and watch Cameroon, Douala, my favorite city, which on that day, unfortunately, you've destroyed it, the beauty of it, across board. There is no African city except maybe somewhere like Cairo that you can relate or compare to Jakarta, to Singapore, to Malaysia. How did it happen? We are country, our countries, our cities are sinking, shrinking over our population, and then we're doing nothing about it. Employment is a problem. African youth are youth educated, but nothing comes out of it. Political leadership. So I'm asking all the time that, do we need democracy or we need elections? Or we need economic, social, economic emancipation or we need economic democracy or we needed just freedom? Yes, it appears that we only struggle to get freedom that a white man, it is not the person with the president over here. Apart from that, that is all across what the whole African continent only that we don't have our colonial masters certain how do we call it at the presidency but in disguise we are so being under the colonization again 
So Africa need to rediscover, redivert the energies and synergies, the spiritiness, the spirit of our forefathers that they fought to get the independence. Is that the spirit that Africa we as BT today? No. And pretty sad. Some of you, some of us, some of all those out there who even got the chance to live with a white man educated out there, we also turn around to live more than even the white man in their own country themselves. What does it mean? It means that we don't like ourselves. We have not united ourselves. The spirit of Pan-Africanism is dead. We are race of 89 countries, if I should say, with three strong jurisdictions, geographical jurisdictions, the Caribbean, the South Pacific, and the African continent. Stronger men and women, stronger youth, good mineral resources, large mineral resources, voluminous, we have them. What have we done with them? Individual countries have not done the best. Ghana has not done the best. We are all surviving, we are all trying. Is that how we want to live in Africa? How far diplomatically are we connected? And that brings to mind, and that brings also to the topic of, if you look at how we position ourselves and how we throw out our diplomats among ourselves, among the member nations, how do we do? How do we connect? How do we open up trade? How do we open up our borders? Till today, it is a crime to be a Ghanaian traveling through Togo. It is a crime for Togolese to come to Ghana. It is a crime for Ghanaian to go to Nigeria. It's a crime for Nigerian to come to Ghana. Open border, just as common border. Police. That one, is that a white man that put those borders there for us? I'm asking. It is not different from Cameroon. My God, travel between Cameroon and Gabon. Travel between Cameroon and Nigeria on the ocean on the Bakasi Peninsula. Travel between interstates of Africa and see how customs, immigration, police, military, we ourselves have barricaded ourselves. But yet, we do cry for foul play. The white man, the colonials, colonial masters, they look at the way hard you've been treating yourself. How did they? Of course, they stole our money. Who doesn't know? They are aware. But they took the money for a justified cause to go and build their country. But they didn't take the whole money. We are now getting even more resources. Which is, we are on earth and more resources. How best have we harnessed the opportunities and also the potentials in those resources? Is it lack of common sense, lack of spirit? The whole answer is just a simple thing of selfishness or just we are not selfless enough to help our brothers. Now we talked about the new countries on the block. Wasn't Ghana, Nigeria, and co, and the African countries, including Cameroon, including Congo, including Lulungwe, uh, talking about Mozambique, talk about Lesotho, Swaziland, South Africa, uh, 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 Algeria. Were they not stronger, these countries stronger than South Korea? When did South Korea rise up? When did they come into the picture? Turkey have gone through bad turbulence moment, moments. In 1994, today's uh, Turkish president, Erdogan, he was a, uh, 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 how do we call it, just a uh, uh, um, mayor of Istanbul. Look at how far he has taken his country in the last 15 years, becoming a global player. And all what we are doing, or we do know, borrow, 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 borrow. Bad leadership knows only how to borrow. And I'm asking a simple question that I've put before most of the African presidents who might have some good relations with relationship, but I ask them that. When would Gabon, when would Cameroon, when would Nigeria, when would Togo start borrowing money to Ghana? When would Ghana borrow money to Benin? When would borrow, Benin give borrow? Why do we go to countries to borrow? And we can't borrow among ourselves. We cannot borrow ourselves money. How? Why is the African Union that we cannot borrow from the African Union? We have to go to overseas, go to Europe, individual countries. You are talking about a small country like Holland tiny country like Holland. And you see 50 countries, African countries going there to borrow money. For God's sake, how does it work? We're talking about China. Population of 1.3, 1.4 billion is the same size of population of the African continent. So if that is the case, China is to China is one country. How does 57 countries, you line up to go and queue before China and take loan and come back? 
and you don't expect China to give you the money and give you citizens and people to come with. How do you expect them to give you their money? So big countries like this, with this mineral resources, with huge money, with huge population, with huge youth, with everything that God gave to the continent of Africa, which doesn't exist in any continent of the world. You group yourself, you go to Russia, everybody queue up and borrow. You group and go to America, you borrow. You group and go to the UK, you borrow. You group and go to France, you borrow. Yes, indeed. I know the French has a special case, the French countries. However, how best have we taken the destiny into our own hands? Is it a problem of education? It is not. So there are a lot of things that as an African or Africans, we're supposed to have done, which we haven't done, which we are not prepared to do. Our concentration on the continent had been just one thing, democracy democracy what is the meaning of democracy here democracy is to prepare our time and then prepare our suits and jackets go and queue don't slap don't fight don't do this go post cast your vote go home and sleep and when the government is formed or when election takes place quiet and then the government is given back to the presidents they don't release the government back to us but in the european jurisdiction the american jurisdiction when you are go for election in electoral campaign, you promise them with legacies. You promise them with a lot of things that you cannot do. And yet we consume, we trust, we believe. And when we give you the power, they hold the power onto their chest. They don't give the government back. But the Europeans, they give the government back. Is it because, or are we saying that democracy is only when undemocratic nation is when somebody stays longer in power, call the president? It is not. Europe, if in terms of longer or time or how long somebody stays in power, then Germany, you can say that it's a democratic nation because they haven't over 15 to 20 years of America regime. Does that make them undemocratic? It is the vision that we don't put in action. It is the initiatives that we don't put commitment in it. That is where and how we feel that let this person come four years, another come four years. How best have this, has it helped us? But then if you reflect and look back to countries that have succeeded, let's take Malaysia. Mahathir stayed in power for how long? Li Kuan Yew stayed in power for how long? You can name them. How long did they stay in power to build their country? Because they built their country on a vision. 71 years of African history is equal to 71 years of Chinese history. When, to the, when in the Second World War, China that you see today as anti-Europe, anti-Western, China was an ally that fought alongside America, United Kingdom, France, Portugal, Italy, the Western allies, China fought for the Western allies. Whereas Japan fought for Germany and they fought also Ethiopia and others fought with Italy on the ISIS powers. But when after the war, that Chinese went back home, their own Japanese that were not done with the fight because they fought in Europe, they fought the Cold War, other places. Japan was not enough. They started a fight for China, unleashed a fight with China, killed Chinese, they did all what they could. And after Japan, China did not get assistance from Russia, which was also a Western ally. There was a separation. China decided to take their destiny into their own hands. Lack of population at that time. So they started, excuse me to say, sleeping indiscriminately among themselves just to double their population. Build a country around, around their leaders. Chama Mao and all of that. Look at the China, the master document, where they decided to topple the world or to be the world leader by 70 years. That is what is coming and that is what they are doing today. They have no land. They have no food. Yes, they have technology. They need a place to milk on. China, directly, indirectly, whether we like it or not, if we are not prepared to simulate this conversation, if we are not prepared to accelerate, but if we are prepared to sit down only and think of our politicians, we will be, in the next 10 years, China dominating, China taking Africa. Because China have introduced 
almost everywhere in Africa, Mozambique and other places, what do we see? They are buying the farms. Chinese have bought the farms in, 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 in Uganda. They bought the farms in countries all over, including Nigeria, including mine, because they need a place to feed them. But then it brings to mind for us to know that, as I've said on different platforms, world is not going to experience anything called World War III. There cannot be any conventional war that is with weapons, human fighting, because there is no territory of the world. There is no sea that has not got owner. There is no land anywhere. So the new world war is what we are having today, which is the intelligent war of the corona. So I'm talking about Africa, the Pan-Africanism, that post-corona, post-COVID, where do we go from there? Is it about economy? Is it about diplomacy? What is it about? What are we going to do? Have we thought about that? Our leaders. There is going to be strict laws, traveling bans that will take care for the next 10, five years. We know all that. Vaccinations will be imposed, whether you like it or not. So if we have a population with this magnitude, with this so great and then great and richer resources, and we are still sitting back and blaming our Western powers and their colonial masters, I strongly disagree. It is the way we sell ourselves. It is how we position our products on the shelves. If I go to shop, and I want to buy a product, and I'm going to buy milk. I'm looking for ideal milk. And then the bottle or the tin is twisted, and you don't see the name written there. You don't find it to buy. So we call it positioning the product on the shelves. How best have we positioned our products? How do we, today, on the African continent, Europeans have given serious money to their individual countries, knowing very well that there's going to be a full shortage, full security. They should come to Africa, partner with Africans, farm and bring their crops, bring their produce, bring their Greek produce that they have, name them. When they are farming here, taking it there, like in the case of Kenya, there is no trade block. It is accepted because the farm belongs to an European. But when an African is taking your produce, called food, called whatever, pepper, tomatoes, anything, crops, grains, take it there. No, there's trade blocks. How best have we bargained with our European partners? How fair have we bargained with the Americans? Of course, if you sell yourself cheap, they buy you cheap. It is as simple as that. It is as simple as that. Susie asks, is it the bargaining that we, we do poor bargaining? Because we only want to see the figures, the zeros. African presidents, they are proud when they're able to take loan. Who on earth in this world should be proud when you take loan? How do you learn, go and take a loan from a country you are older than? How is it possible? What has gone wrong? What have you done with your youth? The capital and human resources that is bestowed on the land of Africa exists nowhere. How did it happen? So we have much and we have so much that we have caused the problems, the troubles of Africa as the making of Africans, ourselves. We haven't been able to break down the frontiers and the barriers. I bring it back to your country, Cameroon. We're talking about vegetation. Is there any country that is rich in terms of fertile land, mineral resources than Cameroon? Look at from your border with the Nigeria Madugri belt, in Jamina of Chad, from Garua, Marua, Mundu, Gandore, come down to, uh, 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 how do we call it, uh, um, Yaoundé, Yaoundé to Douala. I don't know where you come from, but then uh, uh, your city, pay your English, a uh, Cameroonian speaking English like that, I presume and anticipate that you are from the south of Cameroon. From Litra province, which is Douala, going to your area, Bakasi, towards Bakasi land of the Nigeria, Boya, Bafosam, Kumba, Nyenge, uh, Atabon, Black Bush, all the way up to the ocean, crossing over to Nigeria, Kwaibo State. Look at fertile land. Is there any land on African continent that is richer than Cameroonian land? Why are Cameroonians hungry? With political upheavals, political problems, today, tomorrow, 
Abazonia, there's an issue here, African rebels and the bush, etc. Europeans have rebels more than less, if you care to know. At the heart of United Kingdom in London, okay, Sinn Féin, Jerry Adams, there was a, a rebel campaign in the 90s. Bombardments, we saw them. Did it affect them? Germans have skinheads, they are still existing. Bad rebels, they have them. Separatists in, 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 in Spain, they have them. A lot of things. Russia, Chechen rebels, they are there. So it's not in Africa that we cannot progress because we have rebels. When you go to Southeastern Asia, Tamil rebels of Sri Lanka and others, they are there. Go to Latin America, Central America. We have rebels all over the bush. Brazil have rebels. Colombia have rebels. Peru have rebels. Ecuador, El Salvador, all these countries, Nicaragua, they all have rebels. And yet, marginally, they've managed to shape their country, if not anything, created a kind of a beauty. We are sitting there, folding our arms, in despair, throw our hands in the air, in, in heavens, brandishing our hands in, 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 the, in the air with hopelessness, asking China to come and help. And then you see that our young brother, 42 year old vibrant president, Andre Rajonelina of Madagascar, saying that I have the medicine of what? COVID. I can cure. African leaders say that no, because a certain World Health Organization have told them not to take, not to validate. Who's making is that? You are waiting for America to fight off losing 1,000 people a day. Over 200 people, 1,000 people dying, Europeans, Italians, you want them to finish burying all their corpses before they sit down, design medication and bring it to you. Is that how we think? Is that what we're waiting for? Is that the African that our fathers fought for independence? Is that the pan-Africanism? Is that the what? The system 